today we're looking at a turn-based strategy blast from the past called Robert E. Lee Civil War General. Drop us a comment on your favorite tactical level turn-based game and don't forget to like and subscribe. Turn-based tactical war games were a staple of early computer games, and the American Civil War provided inspiration for several of them, like the Battleground series or Sid Meier's Gettysburg and Antietam, which are great games in their own right. Today, one of the best Civil War games is Ajod's American Civil War II, published by Slytherin. However, this is a strategic level game of the entire war, including grand strategy elements like diplomacy, production, organization and recruitment of forces, uh, multiple theaters, but no tactical control of the battles itself like might be found in Creative Assembly's Total War series. There are a few decent competitors to the Ajod title, like Ultimate General Civil War by Game Lab, but that is an RTS game, so even though it's at the tactical level, you gotta be dealing with the real-time strategy elements. So for a truly great tactical level, turn-based war game about the Civil War, you have to kind of look to some of these earlier games, particularly one old game I'll be showing off today, again, Robert E. Lee Civil War General. First off, let's set the scene a bit. It's 1995, and Panzer General is a runaway success that will spawn a massive cross-platform franchise and quite a few imitators. While it's easy to assume that a game titled Robert E. Lee Civil War General and released on the coattails of the Panzer General craze was just some cheap imitator set in a new era, this is far from true. Civil War General was originally developed by Impressions Games, who created an earlier Civil War game titled The Blue and the Grey. And Civil War General was intended as a remake of another of their earlier games titled Frontlines. However, during this game's development, the studio was acquired by Sierra. As the project grew, it took on a new direction, and eventually the new name, Civil War General. Utilizing new internet research capabilities that allowed for meticulous research into obscure areas like ordnance tables, personal journals, and all sorts of other detailed information, the game gradually became something that its designer, Jeffrey Fisk, said would create a product Civil War enthusiasts could play, regardless of prior gaming experience. He also said that the game was focused on not sacrificing that historical realism. Unlike Panzer General or many other turn-based war games, there is literally no emphasis at all on capturing territory. Towns, forests, hills, bridges, fords, all the terrain that games like Panzer General might put down a flag marking a victory point location on were of literally no point value. None of the terrain was. So how do you win a war game if not by capturing valuable terrain? Fist described the game's design as one of morale and maneuver. Instead of randomly assigning point values to terrain, forcing the player to focus on the control of specific hexagons. The important areas of the battlefield were determined by how the armies deployed themselves. In order to shatter a unit's morale to make it retreat, the player would need to try a maneuver to the flank or rear of the enemy, like a real general. The focus of the game was keeping your army's morale and organization high so that you could make those maneuvers and defeat the enemy not on the control of arbitrary victory point locations. Each playthrough could result in the territorial focal point of the battle being different, depending on how the player or players chose to deploy their army. The gameplay also includes several individual settings that help increase or decrease the difficulty. This is where it really shines in comparison to some of the other games of the time, or even some of the games now where difficulty is simply giving the AI extra bonuses. The line of sight system has four different settings, including disabled, and increasing the line of sight difficulty makes maneuvering to hold high ground for artillery much more important, as the terrain heights, trees, and position of other units can block cannon fire. In addition, the fog of war can be turned on or off. When turned on, units like scout snipers and cavalry become more important, as do their positioning on the high ground or at the edge of forests to spot the enemy. It's with the fog of war on and the line of sight difficulty in the low to medium range that I feel the true replayability of these battles is on display. In those conditions, a player who simply expects to sit in one defensible location can find themselves blindsided by an opponent who chose to flank them, especially if the opponent comes from more than one side, causing the battle to shift to new parts of the battlefield that the defender was not expecting. It also allows for the possibility of meeting engagements, where units that are on the move and don't expect to see enemy contact suddenly find themselves engaged, and battles can be fought over areas that they otherwise might not have been, like happened at the Battle of Gettysburg in real life. 
The game consists of historical battles that can be played in single player and versus a human. It also includes a somewhat dynamic campaign that tracks your army's performance and allows you to make upgrades to your weapons between the battles. Though the full campaign experience is only available for the Confederate player, a human opponent can play the Union in campaign mode if the campaign is started while holding down the left control key while clicking on Start New Campaign. The game found quick success. It was the best-selling war game of 1996, and after a price reduction, Civil War General was the United States' 25th best-selling computer game overall in the year 1998. While some critics of the game were quick to paint it with the Panzer General knockoff brush, many others saw the game for the more unique experience that it was. While this gem of a game does not run on Windows 10 or 11 natively, you can still play through DOSBox. However, the online multiplayer will not likely work in DOSBox, so you have to use the hot seat mode to play against another player. While this may limit the audience of today from enjoying the game as much as those of us who knew it in the 90s did, it still packs an awful lot of enjoyable gameplay into a small package that is both easy to learn and difficult to master, especially against a human opponent. Here's a gameplay teaser of our next Blast from the Past video. Comment below on your favorite tactical level turn-based game, then check out some of our other content offerings. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, every little bit helps when you're a small channel.